Today's video features one of the main soul performers of the 1960s. This soul vocalist was both gruff and gentle. Although he is considered in a lower regards than various of musicians such as Otis Redding and Aretha Franklin, fans who appreciate their soul tunes on the raw side genuinely favor him. With his earlier songs, he also contributed a lot to developing the sound of Southern Soul. Today's video is all about Mr. Wilson Pickett. Before we start today's video, please be sure to leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and push that notification bell to be sure you won't miss out on any more uploads. Now without further ado, let's cue that intro. Wilson Pickett was born on March 18, 1941 in Praxville, Alabama. He's the fourth of 11 children. Growing up in an extremely strict church going home, his upbringing was very strict as Pickett described his mother as the baddest person on the planet. Pickett claimed she used to strike him with whatever she could, including skillets and stove wood. He mentioned one day that he ran away and cried his eyes out in the woods with his dog. Pickett grew up in a church going household as I stated earlier, therefore he sung in his family's Baptist church choir. Pickett was 14 years old when he decided to pack his belongings and head north to Detroit to live with his father in 1955. Here in Detroit, he became very close friends with little Richard. Pickett began singing on the streets after being highly influenced by Richard. He developed a loud, emotional approach while singing in church, which further improved when he adapted to the Detroit singing techniques. Pickett later joined a local gospel group called the Violinaires. The group toured alongside other gospel groups such as the Soul Steers, the Swan Silvertones, and the David Sisters all across the country. After four years with this group, Pickett was attracted by the success of other gospel singers who left gospel for secular music. By 1959, he joined the group The Falcons, which was one of the first group to introduce gospel vocalists to secular music, which opened the path for them to go to soul music. The group has a long history of famous members who have gone on to become renowned solo artists. Eddie Floyd and Sir Mac Rice was part of the group when Pickett joined. Pickett recorded the song Let Me Be Your Boy with the Prime X as backup vocalist. Come on, let him be your boy. Come on, let him be your boy. Unfortunately, the song wasn't never released until 1963. Pickett's biggest hit with the group came in 1962 when he sang lead and co wrote the song I Found a Love. Oh. With the group having one minor hit, it opened up the doors for him to attack a solo career. At the beginning of 1963, Pickett signed a deal with Double L Records. His first solo recordings was If You Need Me. If you need me, call. It's Too Late. I'm down to my last heartbreak. That you won't ever break my heart. And my heart belongs to you. So long, so long, so long, so long. 1963, Pickett released his debut album titled It's Too Late. That next year, he released two singles with I'm Gonna Cry. I wanted you so bad. And come home, baby. Some way, in 1965, Pickett released two more singles with In the Midnight Hour. And Don't Fight It. That same year, he released his second album titled In the Midnight Hour, which peaked at 107th on the Billboard 200 charts 
and number three on the Billboard Top R&B Albums chart. In October 1965, Pickett had three recording sessions with Stax Records, which featured Isaac Hayes on piano. These singles was Soulville USA, In 99 and a half. Pickett didn't return to Stax Records for his next session because the label owner had banned outside productions by December of 1965. Pickett proceeded to go to Fame Studio, which had a good connection with Atlantic Records. Here, he recorded the song Land of a Thousand Dances. This single helped convince Atlantic to sign him. In 1966, he released his third album titled The Exciting Wilson Pickett that peaked at number 21 on the Billboard 200 charts and number 3 on the Billboard Top R&B Albums charts. That next year was a very busy year for Pickett. He released two albums in one year starting with The Wicked Pickett that peaked at number 42 on the Billboard 200 charts and number 5 on the Billboard Top R&B Albums charts followed by the Sound of Wilson Pickett, which peaked at number 54 on the Billboard 200 charts and number 7 on the Billboard Top R&B Albums charts. That same year, he had several charted hit singles with Everybody Needs to Love, I Found the Love, yeah, yeah. Funky Broadway, I'm in love. Yes, I am. Love, love, love. And Stagger Lee. When I heard my old dog barking at me, was By the end of 1967, Pickett began working with producers Tom Down and Tommy Cokebill, along with writing songs with Bobby Womack. In 1968, Pickett would do a repeat by releasing two albums in the same year with I'm In Love that peaked at number 70 on the Billboard 200 charts and number 9 on the Billboard Top R&B Albums charts. Also, The Midnight Mover that peaked at number 91 on the Billboard 200 charts and number 10 on the Billboard Top R&B Albums charts. 1969, Pickett released another album called Hey Jude that peaked at number 97 on the Billboard 200 charts and number 15 on the Billboard Top R&B Albums charts. This album had two hit singles with A Man and a Half. I can make you feel better than you ever felt before. And the self-entitled song. Don't be afraid. You were made, made to go out. In late 1969, Pickett had a recorded session with Criteria Studios in Miami, where he recorded the singles You Keep Me Hanging On. Why don't you, baby? Get out of my life. Why don't you? Sugar, sugar. You are my candy girl. And she said yes. La, 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 la. 1970, Pickett teamed up with Philadelphia legends Gamble and Huff for the album Wilson Pickett in Philadelphia which peaked at number 64 on the Billboard 200 charts and number 12 on the Billboard Top R&B Albums charts. This album had three charted singles with Engine Number 9, engine, engine number nine. Can you, can you? Don't Let the Green Grass Fool You Girl, try to remember when we didn't have no shoes. and International Playboy. That same year, he released another album called Right On that peaked at number 197 on the Billboard 200 charts and number 36 in the Billboard Top R&B Albums charts. 1971, Pickett released his last album with Atlantic called Don't Knock My Love, which peaked at number 132 on the Billboard 200 charts and number 23 on the Billboard Top R&B Albums charts. This album had three charted singles with the self-entitled song
call my name, I'll be there. In fire and water. After his tenure with Atlantic, Pickett signed to RCA Records where he released two albums that same year with Mr. Magic Man. That peaked at number 187 on the Billboard 200 charts and number 38 on the Billboard Top R&B Albums charts, followed by Ms. Lena Bay. That peaked at number 34 on the Billboard Top R&B Albums charts. Throughout the remainder of the 70s, Pickett released five albums, with one album charting with the 1979 album I Want To that peaked at number 69 on the Billboard Top R&B Albums charts. Pickett's success began to wind down close to the mid-70s as he bounced across labels to labels, including Ricket Records, Big Tree Records, and EMI America Records. Pickett's career began to pick up just a little bit when he found himself at Motown by the late 80s. Here, he would record the album American Soul Man in 1987 that peaked at number 75 on the Billboard Top R&B Albums charts. Pickett released his final album, It's Harder Now, in 1999 under Bullseye's Blue Records. After Pickett's career began to deteriorate, he turns to drinking alcohol and heavily abusing cocaine. This caused him to become overly abusive towards his family members and peers. Pickett's problem with alcohol and cocaine resulted in several run-ins with the authorities, including his 1991 arrest for making threats while being intoxicated and driving his car across the front lawn of the New Jersey mayor. In 1992, Pickett was arrested for driving intoxicated when he hit an 86-year-old pedestrian. According to authorities, they discovered six empty vodka bottles along with six empty can bottles in his car. Pickett consented to go to treatment and he obtained a reduced sentence of a year in jail and five years probation as a consequence. A court would later order him to move out of his house following his living girlfriend who accused him of threatening the killer also tossing a vodka bottle at her. Pickett was arrested again in 1996 after attacking his girlfriend while under the influence of drugs. Pickett was arrested for drug possession after his girlfriend declined to press charges. Despite all of these troubles, Pickett was still honored for his success that he did in the music industry. In 1991, Pickett was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, as well as being honored with a Pioneer Award by the Rhythm and Blues Foundation. Pickett was also inducted into the Michigan Rock and Roll Legends Hall of Fame in 2005. In 2015, Pickett was inducted into the Rhythm and Blues Music Hall of Fame. Now Pickett, throughout his whole career, was nominated for five Grammys, but he never won any. Pickett spent the latter part of his career by doing dozens of performances until 2004 when he began experiencing health concerns. Between 2005 and 2004, Pickett suffered a heart attack, which kept him in and out the hospital. According to Pickett's sister, she indicated that Pickett was intending to return to his roots and releasing a gospel album, but sadly, he will never recover. Pickett passed away on January 6, 2006 at the age of 64. Pickett was a gauge and was the father of four at the time of his death. Wilson Pickett was an amazing performer as well as a terrific songwriter, penning countless of singles for bands such as Booker T and the MGs, Genesis, and the Rolling Stones, to mention a few.